Okay, so we are on to episode five, Fight the Bite. I say episode five, it's probably more like episode seven, but because we restructured things, that's not important. Uh, Fight the Bite really ramps up the excitement, as you can tell in my voice, where the Cult of Many Faces has lost Alexis, who has been captured by the Pitts team. Norris manages to uh, get the jump on her and they put her in the pit cells which is an excellent opportunity for Maya to grill her to find out where Martin is although Alexis isn't too keen to give up that information. Uh, we've also got Alexis at the Fight the Bite support group uh, which is a support group for vampires, werewolves and zombies to go to to try and be a bit more human or a bit less bitey or a bit less stabby and a bit less murdery uh, which is which was a really fun scene to do. I can only imagine it was a really fun scene to write as well. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much what's happening in, in Fight the Bite. Hi, my name's Laura Anderson and I'm the screenwriter for Fight the Bite the new episode of Cops and Monsters. I've been working as a screenwriter for nearly 10 years now. I started out with a screenwriting master's from Screen Academy Scotland, and since then I've gone on to work in feature films, short films, TV series, apps, games, and now a web series. I was invited to send a script by James Harding, the script editor of the series, and he told me to send one to Fraser Cool, who produces and directs. So I sent Fraser this sci-fi comedy about the end of the world that I have in my portfolio um, and thankfully both Fraser and James enjoyed the script and invited me to come in and chat about writing this episode. I was really interested in joining the project. I'm a big sci-fi fantasy fan and love things like Buffy so the chance to write something that was about vampires and werewolves and kick-ass sort of supernatural cops all in Scotland just it was too good to be true. Um, when I got, came on board I read the series Bible which had outlines of my episode and the episode after and background information on all the characters and it just really appealed to me and yeah really made me want to write it. For my episode we started out with a short synopsis that really took me through all the things that had to happen. Um, just a few paragraphs about what needed to go into the episode itself. I expanded on that and made it a few page treatment which I discussed with Fraser and James and we refined and then I went away and I wrote I think 25 pages which became the final shooting script. Something that was a particularly interesting challenge for me was that because this was the penultimate episode I had to be really careful that storylines were wrapped up and characters were all properly represented but that it left things in such a place that it would be quite an exciting lead-in to the last episode of the series. Um, hopefully I've done that. It was really great to write and it was a big responsibility to have the penultimate episode, but I enjoyed it an awful lot. Guest stars. So we technically have Rachel Teat back as Goody Two Shows Grace. She appears via Skype which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, we also have Leona Kate Vaughan who is Yana in Blood. Uh, our second Wolf Blood cast member to join us. So my character is called Alicia, or Ali for short. She is a vampire. You might be able to guess that because of the bangs and the eyes. Um, and she is a head of PR. Um, and basically it's her job to basically help the team. Um, kind of like, I'm not going to give too much away actually, but she, her job is to basically help the team and she's an asset as well to the team. Um, she's a really, really cool character to play actually. She's kind of got this um, kind of, not strict, but um, quite assertive nature to her. But she's also, I think, deep down quite nice. How I got involved with Cops and Monsters was um, Fraser Cool, the director, um, and kind of like the creator really of Cops and Monsters. Um, he got in contact with myself um, and asked me would I like to be part of it and once I heard about Cops and Monsters and um, once I found out a little bit more about the characters and the story and the plot line, I was like yes please, yes please, S sign me up, I wanted, to, I wanted to get involved straight away. My views on crowdfunding, I think that 
it's amazing. I think it's really, really good. I think it supports um, kind of like low budget like television productions and film productions. Um, I think also that I think more people should be made more aware of it, and I think more people should try and get involved. Um, I think it definitely needs more like publicity as well. So maybe social media is a really good way of maybe uh, introducing and, and kind of like um, channeling um, crowdfunding. It's really, really good. I think people need to push it more, definitely. It's a great way to, to raise funds for fantastic um, productions such as Cops and Monsters. Uh, we kind of ran out of time with Simon Weir, who plays Norris on the day where we're shooting all the pits off his stuff. Um, we, we kind of fell behind because sometimes that just happens. So we were very creative, we think where we filmed Simon's kind of first couple of scenes and the last scene that he's in. Uh, and we kind of handed over the rest of his dialogue to Leona um, and we kind of retooled the scene on the spot but I think it worked out quite well. God bless Leona uh, and Ellen who plays Maya for uh, working around that. Hello again and welcome to Cops and Monsters. I think this is the third or fourth episode I've shot as Norris. Um, this one's called Fight the Bite um, and in this I get to do a little bit more actual action. So, stupidly, they've given me firearms. So I've been killing werewolves and things, or is that, a, is that a spoiler? Probably a spoiler, who cares? Anyway, so you'll see it soon enough. But yeah, so I've got gunplay in this, um, and a bit more bossing about to do as well. Splitting the teams, uh, obviously me and Maya have still got some problems. I think she's secretly in love with me, I think. That's really the subtext here that's not really been explored, but I'm sure that'll come out in future episodes. Uh, we've got some new guest stars as well. Um, I'm back in the same uh, location. Uh, I don't usually get out much, but the rest of them get lovely locations to go to, and I don't get that. I don't even get the tooth or claw. So, no, this is a good one. Uh, it's good fun to be back. Another, it's got quite a long day today. We've got about eight scenes, I think, to shoot today. We've just shot the first one outside. Um, it's Old Fern Day here in Glasgow, so this filming was to the background of um, singing and cheering in the background, and I'm missing the match. But Celtic 1 4 1, so I think it's okay. Uh, that'll lose us half the audience. So no, no, it's been great. It's been great. It's, uh, it's kind of the only thing I would give up on actually watching the old firm game would be a spot of filming. So it's nice to come back, uh, back and, and shoot just up the road. I'm on holiday next week, so it's nice to squeeze this in before I go as well. And of course, we've got the Christmas special to look forward to, in which Norris goes to Jamaica. So that's what we'll be crowdfunding for next. So all of you shekels, Jamaican dollars accepted as well, because um, Uncle Daddy wants to go to Jamaica. Okay. So, good to see you. Thanks for what you've done. Thanks for all the cash that's come in. Um, makes all this possible. And fingers crossed for the next one. And Kingston, Jamaica. Hans is a human who sells his blood to vampires for money. He likes the kind of rush that, that give him, giving his blood to other people gives him. Today, Hans is in a kind of support group meeting for vampires, werewolves, humans that have the kind of the bloodlust, and he's introduced to Maya Hedges, who he knows through past experiences from reading about her, her past. So we've learned a little bit more about Maya, a little bit more about Hans. Hopefully, in the future, we'll see what happens. I've known Fraser for a while, we've worked on previous uh, projects before, so he got in touch with me and said, um, would I potentially be up for playing the part of Hans? And as always, it's a pleasure working with Fraser and the rest of the guys, so I was up for doing it. Very much enjoyed today. Always, always a pleasure of working. When it comes to working with Fraser, working in any part of the film industry, it's always good fun. Good laugh. I think crowdfunding is quite a good, a good way to get it done. It gets you, no, well, it obviously gets you money, but it also gets you kind of noticed with fans. So you get a fan base that actually wants to kind of promote you guys as well by funding money to you, and they kind of get feel as if they're a part of it with you. Well, my name is Katrina Bryan, and I'm playing Jenny in this episode and Jenny runs group therapy for werewolves, zombies, vampires but to try and encourage them to stay away from blood, not harm human beings, and trying to be civilised. So it's a, it's a hard task. Well she's running a, one of her usual groups and it's going alright although uh, there's a bit of uh, you know a bit of upset when Alexis sort of says no actually we're meant to love blood and, and she's trying to get the group a bit upset, so I had to calm that down. And then Maya Hedges came storming into the next one. And my character's very sweet and compassionate and loving. And then when Maya comes storming in, demanding to get information, 
um, you see another side to my character that actually she's got some darkness in there. She gets really angry and very fearsome and scary. So, and then, then we find out that Maya actually, uh, her parents were killed by werewolves and suddenly I soften again. But it kind of alludes to an interesting, darker side to Jenny. So you never know, we might get to explore it in the future. I know Fraser. I know Fraser Cool from working together at the BBC. Um, I do a kids show called Nina and the Neurons for CBeebies and Fraser was working in that as a runner and researcher and I play Nina in that show and I remember him telling me about it and I thought it sounded brilliant and I admired the fact that he, you know, he basically got off his backside and did it himself but it was brilliant, a lot of hard work. I really admired that and said to him, look, if you ever need me in, give me a shout. So here we are. Well, I think it kind of speaks for itself. I think it gives people a chance to, people who are passionate, genuinely passionate about something, gives them a chance rather than having to go through the loops and the jumps that, you know, traditional sort of filmmaking and things uh, requires, knowing the right people, getting into the right corporation, the right production company, the right producer. If people don't have that, then they can crowdfund, do things like that. If they've, got a, if they've got a story to tell. And it just opens up that um, anyone can do something if they've got enough passion and drive to do it. So originally I answered a casting call for uh, Kenny's character and didn't get the part. Wasn't good enough, apparently. Wasn't funny enough or handsome enough. And uh, I'm kidding, obviously. Fraser <clears throat> still liked my performance and wanted to cast me in the show, so he gave me the role of the devious, conniving, Mr. Clark, government agent, Minister of Justice. And to be honest, it's probably more up my street as well. Today I shot a scene with Leona Vaughn, who plays Alicia Hughes, and a scene where Mr. Clark wants to meet her, wants to talk to her about certain things. I can't give too many things away because you won't watch the episode, but it was a really nice scene to shoot. Uh, really good to work with Leona, and we had a lot of fun shooting it. And I think you'll enjoy the scene. It's a really, really nice scene. To everyone out there who is watching Cops and Monsters, who is supporting the show, who is, most importantly, giving their own hard-earned cash toward the show, thank you so much for doing it, because if you guys didn't do that, we wouldn't have a show. I wouldn't be sitting here, and, you know, we wouldn't be doing what we love to do. So thank you so much for continuing to support our endeavours, and we appreciate your support as well. I think crowdfunding is incredibly important in the film industry, because it gives filmmakers platform to make the films that they want to make and you know people who are maybe not getting the opportunities that they need and the opportunities that they deserve so I think crowdfunding is incredibly important I've done a few productions where if it weren't for crowdfunding production itself would just not have happened so I think that crowdfunding is incredibly important in the film industry it's very accessible for young filmmakers and old filmmakers as well um, you know, again, people who are maybe not getting opportunities that they deserve uh, at the moment. It's something that I'm glad it's happening and I hope it continues to keep on going. Well, I'm Maya Hedges. Um, well, not. I'm Ellen Paxton, but I play Maya Hedges. Um, and in, wish yeah, Maya I wish Hedges. I was Maya Hedges. Somewhere in here, my Maya Hedges. <laughs> um, and um, in this episode, Maya is not allowed to do what she wants to do, which is basically look for Martin, be part of the police team hunting down Martin. Um, she's made to be do, do desk work and things like that because she's been a little bit naughty. She's gotten a little bit bold. So, um, so yeah, this is her really sort of putting her in a zone of being really uncomfortable because she can't do anything about it. And being my head is, she doesn't really listen to that and just goes off and does her own thing anyway, which obviously causes even more trouble in the lives of people such as Alexis. Hello. This episode, I feel, is really... Um Pivotal mm. for Alexis. Lots happened, and I find out new things about her that I didn't know. I think she has to reveal a lot about her past, which she's definitely mm. not comfortable with. Has to confront a lot of issues, confront a lot of demons and skeletons in her closet. First scene with with you as well. Yeah, definitely. That was exciting. Yeah, it yeah, was very exciting. But we're not location. we're not friends. We're not friends. I hate you. Mm. I hate you. As I am not allowed to sort of hunt down Martin, I'm kind of going about it in whatever way I can to try and find out information. So for instance, when Alexis gets taken into the police uh, cells, 
even though I'm not meant to go and speak to her at all, I end up trying to go and interview her, which really is silly because I'm so emotionally invested that I just end up shouting at her. <laughs> doesn't really go very well. Um, but obviously for Alexis, she's been put in the pits set. So yeah. again, it's another place for you because you're like, you know, usually she's really strong and stuff, and now she again is like totally yeah. out of her comfort zone. So I think that's why the cracks definitely, start to show. Yeah. yeah, I feel Alexis feels quite debilitated mm. because she's usually in control of all the situations she's mm -hmm. put in. Um, and yeah, no, I, I think she's uh, tested mm. quite a lot. Um, and then she has the meeting, the support group, which, which is, is really funny. Does like, not go well. Yeah. Yeah, the support group I think is such a nice little touch yeah, as I well. Like it. it's, it's really great. And then obviously Maya and that's so it begins with Alexis in the um, in the support group and then we're thinking it's gonna uh, be ending with Maya and the support group coming full circle of how they're chasing after Alexis to find out more information and then that's when uh, it all dawns on Maya where the cult actually is, even though we've been trying to tell her all along. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so she just figured the sort of the penny drops while she's there. Yeah. <laughs> well um, Maya's Quite interesting because um, she seems it seems quite um, obvious. I mean, you know, her parents being killed by werewolves. She starts off really wanting to get into the pits so that she can sort of take revenge on um, on like the werewolf community. But as it sort of goes ahead, you realise it's maybe not as simple as that, especially in this episode. Yes, um, actually, that it comes clear that there's a lot more going on there. And for instance, with Martin, it seemed like she maybe didn't really care and she was using him. But now that he's gone, she's just all she can think about. So I think. She's developing just to show that there's she is a real person. She's not just it's not surface level, but she's just got a one trap mind. She seems quite badass. Yeah, in the early exactly. Episodes, yeah, and now her vulnerability is really showing yeah. through. Like now, it's like she's actually quite sort of a fragile person, and you know maybe not equipped to deal with yeah. the situation she's got herself Definitely, into. definitely. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and for Alexis, I feel um, well. Obviously, she's still quite new quite fresh but I feel like she's um, just finding herself mm -hmm. I feel like she's trying to work out who she is and she's trying to follow orders and she thinks that she wants one thing but then more recently she found out that she probably mm -hmm. isn't on the right side but it's such an interesting thing with that yeah because it's like she's got somewhere she fits in with the cult definitely and that's all she mm -hmm. knows yeah but then when people like her sister start to question that she's like Exactly, like that's when her actual blood relatives actually appear, but she's never really interacted with her family. Barton's just taken up years and years and years ago. Um, but yeah, I think she's her. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? She doesn't know who to align herself with, and she's really struggling because obviously she, the cult is her everything, yeah. but now she's questioning that. Awesome location yeah, this morning. It was, amazing. it was so cool. It was like walking down the mm -hmm. It was incredible. Because like, it was in for the pit cell, so Alexis was in the cell, but the one she was in is a real police cell from 1998. So yeah, it was like, yeah, there was like, in, uh, in, like writing on the walls and graffiti, yeah. and it was amazing. So it was amazing. It was really good because it made it feel properly like. Yeah, and I was, I was trapped in there yeah. all morning in really horribly uncomfortable positions. Yeah. Um, but it added to it. Yeah, yeah definitely. So it's so, been a great. Um, Great day for location, definitely. Yes, yeah, definitely. And then we've just arrived here. We're about to start filming the support group scenes. Locations that we had, we got to film in the Enterprise Centre in Govan, which was a prison, but they've now turned it into a place for offices. Must be weird working in somewhere that used to be a prison, but, but they still have an original cell. And when we were supposed to do Cops and Monsters uh, a couple of years ago, uh, we looked at that to be kind of the pits holding cell. So we were lucky that we got to go back and actually use that. And it just looks great. And it's a really nice, the scenes that we did are really nice between uh, Maya and Alexis. They kind of get to know each other a little bit um, because there's nowhere for Alexis to go and Maya wants answers. So we got to do some really nice stuff. Uh, Ennis, who plays Alexis, was kind of held up on two or three chairs and a mat so we could level out the shot so we could see both our face and Maya through the window. Uh, she definitely suffered for her art. Uh, but it was her birthday and we all bought her cake, so we're nice people, really, yes. Well, I mean, it's been amazing. I can't believe how I, Especially the most recent episodes, it's just kind of snowballed. Mm. It's been incredible and people are been talking about That's it. Absolutely. We've got like people that email us mm. and talk to us on Twitter. It's, it's really bizarre, exciting. But, um, I think that um, the team's been really sort of inventive with their crowdfunding ideas as well. All thing. the perks. Yeah, all the perks they do are brilliant and things like, you know, the, uh, people coming on to be extras and 
you know, that they'll pay a little money, bit of money to come on and spend the day on a film set and see what it's like. And yeah. I think that's really nice because rather than just being like, you know, give us money and we'll Definitely. go off and do it. Yeah, experience. it's very interactive yeah. and lots of things like fan art being sent in and like it's always going back and forth rather than just plugging the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it money. feels like you're actually like creating something together mm -hmm. rather than just making something and people watching it. It's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's like tangible. For yeah. No, I think it, yeah, it's been amazing. It's like heartwarming, really, to see people who have actually got nothing to do with us or even the film industry, and they're just interested and they're just excited about it. So they're yeah. all, they want to help. And they want more episodes. Yeah. So they, they, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. it's a bit bizarre, really. It's surreal. Mm. Uh, we also filmed at the Hub, uh, which has just become the pit central from <laughs> now. Uh, that's where we film all of the office stuff, and we also used the canteen area for the Fight the Bite support group. Uh, Kerry, our designer, just does a great job of making sure that it looks like we have more money than we actually do. Uh, she's very, very talented and we're very lucky. Um, and on that note, Leah, who does all of our makeup, is just great. We had a couple of uh, extra hands on board with Claire McGuire, uh, not to be mistaken with producer Claire McGuire, uh, and Martin Roden, who came on and helped out kind of get all of our vampires and werewolves and zombies looking the part. So everybody pulled together uh, and that's what's really important uh, about Cops and Monsters is that the cast and crew, when they have to, really do pull together to make sure that we get stuff done. So we are, we have crowdfunded episode nine, which is technically episode six, uh, and it's in human nature and it's my turn to hand in a script. Uh, this is it, this is the finale, the big, all of it, the big, big ending, all of it coming together from from when we first saw uh, the couple of many faces torture Terry to little, the little old uh, woman being dragged off behind the door and slaughtered by a werewolf. It's all, it all came from here. This is where it's all kind of going to end. Uh, you're going to meet Maya's parents who died. Oh, how, how will you do that, you ask? Well, you'll find out. Uh, and we will finally have a face off between Maya and the cult. And that's where the spiders come in. So might be some soldiers with guns. We don't know. We're working on it. We're speaking to Carter Ferguson. It's not my problem. It's down to Carter. Uh, and that is episode five slash seven. I think if you're a fan of Cops and Monsters or you're thinking about watching my episode or another episode, then thank you so much. Um, thank you particularly to everybody that's on Twitter and Facebook that connects with us there. It's just great to see all your tweets and your likes and to get feedback on the show. I really hope you enjoy the next episode of Cops and Monsters Fight the Bite. And yeah. Thank you ever so much for everybody who gave us money for this campaign and our most recent campaign and everything just everyone who shares it and likes it and gives us money and believes in us and watches it. We are so grateful. We would not have a show without you. Uh, and I wouldn't have to go through all this stress every time we wanted to make an episode. Uh, but no, it is wonderful. Thank you very much. And we will see you on the next one.